Tell me when you're ready. Ready. Okay. Hey, what's up guys? It's Griff here with Rock Band Relief, and I am so excited to be sitting here with Clara C. Yay, that's me! Total YouTube maven and huge award-winning singer-songwriter has very generously agreed to put up her gorgeous song, Heartstrings. Yeah. For Rock Band Relief. And so we're gonna take it, we're gonna make it into a playable track for Rock Band 3 with all the trimmings, because mm -hmm. there's lots of new cool features that players can use. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna put it into the Xbox Live Marketplace and every single time somebody downloads it, part of the download proceeds are going to go to the American Red Cross uh, for their disaster relief effort in Japan, yeah. which is pretty massive and is not gonna be over anytime soon. So we're very grateful to you for doing that. Oh, my pleasure, really. So Clara, you've, had, you've managed to amass a huge following of fans in a relatively short period of time. What is it about your music that you think people like so much? I don't know, I think they should tell me. <laughs> um, I just I just do it because I feel it and I guess they relate. I try to be positive, you know, yeah. in my music and maybe that that works. It totally comes through and it's beautiful to listen to and I think there's um, there's a lot going on musically in each of your layers that you've built in that it's gonna be a lot of fun for people to yeah. kind of explore and get interactive with. Yeah, especially with that like new keyboard and all these new modifications and stuff. Yes, in Rock Band 3 they have pro drums that helps drummers get up onto the right cymbal mm -hmm, pads, mm -hmm. three-part vocal harmony, and um, keyboards. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. So Clara, um, other than me stalking you, what was it that uh, interested you in getting your music into rock band? Well, first of all, I play the game, and I love it. And I thought that the idea of people rocking out to heartstrings in that way would be awesome, like they were actually my band. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, once we have all the materials and we're ready to get started on rocking the song uh, yeah. through the authoring process, we're not just gonna go into our secret cave, author up the song, and then have it magically appear in the store. We're actually gonna take you, the viewers, along with us every step of the way. So what we're hoping that we can do is um, essentially educate the public about how this is done, because it is pretty tedious and there's a lot of moving parts, but as people learn how to do it, if they decide that they have their own music, or they have a relationship with a band that would like to have this done, uh, or maybe they want to come on and volunteer with the Rock Band Relief Team, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. They'll have um, kind of the background knowledge to be able to do it. And we're going to show as much of the process as humanly possible. And uh, by the time you get to the end of it, you'll know heartstrings backwards and forwards, and you'll be ready to author up your own songs for Rock Band 3. Thanks a lot, Clara. Ta-da. Yeah. All right, guys, here we are. Let's roll right into it. Um, this is going to be a pretty epic 24-part YouTube series, uh, walking through as many aspects of the uh, Rock Band Network authoring process as we possibly can. We won't be able to show every second of every phase of it, but um, we'll definitely touch on each of the areas and try to show you enough that, uh, that you'll be able to get started authoring your own music. So... Um, just wanted to take a quick spin through what we're going to be covering in the series. This is going to look a little daunting, but part of the reason for the sheer number of, of episodes in this series is uh, it just has to do with the 15-minute time limit on YouTube and also just because of attention spans, and I want to be mindful of um, how busy people are, so we're going to try to keep this as concise as possible. I'll be talking a, a little bit fast in, in parts, so I apologize, but uh, it's just in an effort to get through it. So I'll probably be posting these um, episodes in sets of three, because um, they seem to kind of logically fall together in groups of three. So initially here, what we're going to be talking about are some prerequisites that you're going to need in terms of some equipment and uh, some stuff that you'll need to get installed on your computer. And then by the second episode, we'll actually be into uh, working with the audio stems that we received from Clara's um, audio engineer who mixed the album, and we'll be getting into actually setting up the files for Heartstrings in Reaper, which is the editing software that we use to do um, all the charting for Rock Band. And then in the third episode, we'll take a look at Magma, uh, which is the um, packaging utility that we use to put together all the metadata, audio files and some other information about the song and transfer it to uh, the Rock Band Network. So this first episode will pretty much be limited to walking through a couple of the, uh, the prerequisites that you're going to need in order to get started so that you can have a smooth experience and uh, hit the ground running. So obviously you'll need a computer. Um, I believe there are aspects of this process that can be done on a Mac, but um, that's really kind of outside my area of expertise and, and won't really be within the scope of this tutorial, but I'm sure there's good information available um, elsewhere online about that. Um, but all of the uh, assumptions that I'm making in this series will be that you're um, working on a PC, either a desktop or a laptop. 
unless you're working in some sort of a studio environment, you're probably going to find that it's easiest to work on a laptop so that you can move around and um, be close to your uh, 360 console and so forth. You're going to need a good pair of headphones so that you're accurately reproducing um, the audio mix as closely as possible in your ears while you're working, and uh, it's just going to help you to be as faithful as you can to the artist's original work. You're going to need an Xbox 360. You're going to need a copy of Rock Band 3. We used to be able to author under Rock Band 2 originally when this um, program first launched, but that uh, has been retired now, and so we're doing all of our work in Rock Band 3. Depending on whether you're wanting to author and test end-to-end, um, -end, or if you're just wanting to jump in and work on specific instrument parts, uh, maybe for another organization, uh, then you'll need at least one or more of the Rock Band instruments. You'll need a drum kit, either a Rock Band drum kit, or uh, any other digital drum kit with MIDI out can also be used with the new Rock Band uh, MIDI Pro adapter. There's a symbol expansion kit for the Rock Band drum set that um, gives you a set of three colored um, symbol pads and those will allow you to author and test for the new Pro Drums mode in Rock Band 3. Um, you'll need one of the Rock Band guitars. There are a lot of different kinds and um, I'm a big fan of the Beatles Rock Band guitars. Um, as of Rock Band 2 they were all wireless so Rock Band 2 had a great um, uh, wireless Fender that um, had a real comfortable button action on it. Um, you'll need a USB microphone. It can either be a Rock Band microphone or any other USB mic. And then if you want to author and test for the new um, keyboard parts in Rock Band 3, you'll need either the Rock Band 3 2 octave keyboard or you'll need um, a, another keyboard that has MIDI out and then you'll need the, um, the Rock Band MIDI Pro adapter to uh, be able to connect that to your 360 console. You're going to need a, a software application called Reaper, which is the multi-track ed um, audio editing program that we use for doing our mixing and charting for Rock Band. And then there's a set of plugins that Harmonix created that enable Reaper to do a few additional tricks that we need it to do when we're authoring for Rock Band. And then you'll need a copy of Magma, which is uh, the packaging utility. And Reaper and Magma and the plugins are all available um, via links on the creators.rockband.com site, which we'll take a look at in just a second. And those are free to download. Reaper is free to try um, as an evaluation. Um, it is fully functional, and then if you're going to be using this for any type of business purposes, you'll want to get a license for it, and those are extremely inexpensive. In terms of accounts, you're going to need a Windows Live ID account and an Xbox Live Gold membership that are tied to each other. Um, if you're interested enough in Rock Band that you're watching this tutorial, odds are you probably already have both of those. Um, but then you're also going to need uh, an XNA account, um, which is available through a Microsoft site called App Hub, which ties together the Microsoft 360 game developer community with the new Windows 7 phone developer community. Just as of recently, they started calling that App Hub. And um, that costs about $99 a year, I believe, as, the, as of the time of uh, recording this video. And that XNA account will be t also tied to your Windows Live ID, and uh, having that will essentially enable you to transfer songs from your computer to your 360 console in order to test them, and then you'll also need that uh, in order to be able to upload songs to the Rock Band Network to go into the official playtest and, and peer review process. You'll need a rockband.com account, which is free, and you'll need a creators.rockband.com account, which is also free. If you try to create an account on the creator's site, it will actually bounce you to the rockband.com site, and uh, they'll ask you to do that first. Just to give you a quick visual on the websites you'll be visiting, this is the Xbox Live uh, site. It um, resolves to an international URL, depending on where you are in the world, but you can hit this site by visiting uh, www.xboxlive.com. This is where you'll sign up for your Xbox Live Gold account if you don't already have one. You can also sign up for one directly through your console's dashboard. This is the App Hub website for Microsoft, and this is where you'll sign up for your XNA account. And you want to be sure when you do that that you sign in with the same Windows Live ID uh, that's associated with your Xbox Live gamer tag. And then this is the creators.rockband.com website. This is where um, we spend a lot of our time talking to each other, uh, learning new things, and ex exchanging ideas. Um, even without signing in, you're able to access certain aspects of this site. Um, for example, you can get in here and start perusing the forums. This is where you'll sort of get to know uh, the sections of the forum, so you know where to look for different types of information. And you can start following some of the conversations and see the types of, of discussions that we're having. You can also access all of the documentation 
uh, for the Rock Band Network authoring process. Everything that I'm going to be covering in these videos is freely available here in these sections. The only reason for doing this is uh, I've had a number of friends ask me to kind of sit down with them and walk them through the process and connect the dots a little bit as they're having trouble getting started. Um, but once you're off and running, this is a, a tremendous reference that you're constantly referring back to, especially here in the authoring section. And then lastly here is the download section. Um, this is where you're seeing Reaper, uh, the RBN plugins, and Magma. And after you register on the site, um, it'll light up little uh, links down here below each section where you can um, click out and, and download those pieces that you'll need installed on your computer in order to get started. Here's a quick look at Reaper after you get it installed. This is the uh, multi-track audio editing software that we use for mixing and charting for Rock Band. And this is how a song looks um, that's already mostly finished. This is a song called Sometimes by a band called Fundamental Elements that's currently in the playtesting process uh, right now as I'm recording this. And uh, even the way the tracks are laid out that you're seeing here, you got drums, bass, guitar, vocals, this is all sort of made available as part of a template that gets installed uh, in, and made available inside Reaper when you install those RBN plugins. So a lot of this that you're seeing is, is laid out in a way that's specific to Rock Band. And uh, so you don't have to do um, a lot of this setup. You basically just come in and load in your WAV files and start creating your MIDI charts, which we'll be covering in those later sections. Um, so Reaper basically allows us to uh, play back the song um, fully mixed. We can solo the tracks and listen to them individually. And then these MIDI charts are what allow us to actually create the notes that you see coming down the note highway in the game. This, this top area here is essentially the expert chart for drums. And if I click out and take a look at the uh, RBN preview window, I can see how it's going to look when we actually load it up in the game. Once a song is completely charted, we'll go ahead and render out all of its MIDI charts into a package that we reference uh, over here in Magma. This is the utility that we use for packaging up uh, all of the metadata about the song, including how much it's going to cost, its cover art, etc. All those individual audio files that the game uh, keeps separated so that it can drop them out when it needs to if, uh, if you miss a note as you're playing through. And then here on the game data tab, this is where we're actually referencing that MIDI file that we created in Reaper that would contain all of the charting for all those different instruments. This is also where we set the difficulty rating for each of the individual instrument parts and a few other features as well that we'll go into more detail um, in part three.